the story that is so much in my mind, almost always, but in response to Antoine's beautiful, beautiful statement, which I'm deeply touched by, was the story of what happened in my life when my father died. My father died when I was nine. And my family was a, was a you know, a, a working class family that was getting a little bit more middle class. When suddenly my father died of a heart attack and we were on welfare. Boom. Overnight. And almost instantaneously, I realized that I was now being related to as a poor person. And it was even at this l later stage of my life, it was in some ways the biggest shock of my entire life to suddenly be related to as poor as we were. I was, I was one of five kids, the youngest of five kids. I was the, the Wunderkind in my family. I was going to take us permanently out of working class into middle class. I was going to go to college and so on. And suddenly we were on welfare. And my mother was, uh, you know, working to supplement work, uh, welfare by running card games at night and, and making money off of that. And all the kids, I, I went to work selling Husu and baseball at Yankee Stadium. And, you know, again, not, not you know, n n lots of poor people have lived that life. But the impact of poverty is shockingly instantaneous. So that's maybe the commonality. I'm sh the black experience is a different experience than the Jewish experience. The, the 40s and 50s are different than you know, 2009, 2000. But I think that's the, in a way, that's the overlap. It's being, it's being poor. And the message the message that's delivered to poor people, in my experience, and I believe in, it's there in what Antoine is saying, amidst the beautiful statement about me, it's how you're related to if you're poor in this, in this world, I would suspect, but certainly in this country. You're related to as someone who's not gonna make it. it doesn't make a difference what you do, you're poor. You're not going to make it. It's not. It's not explicitly said, but there's. Uh, but I, I felt that in. I, I. I went to this so-called progressive school. I also was skipped from this grade to that grade, and I was you know, officially registered as smart, just as Antoine was. Uh, I went to this progressive school in the Bronx. It was a public school, but it was. You know, it was PS one fourteen in the Bronx, and. When my, after my father died, almost it felt like almost immediately, I suddenly was no longer related to as someone who was going to make it. I was in this class. I was always kind of popular in my class. I was, I was smart. I, I, I wrote stuff even when I was very young. But, you know, I was poor. And if you're poor, you're not going to make it. Now, I know there are obvious exceptions. There are people who grew up poor and did great things. I, I knew that. But the attitude was, was still there in general that you... Um, so, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to kind of jump to... So, I don't, want, I don't want to do a bad movie and say, so the next day I woke up and dedicated my life to poor youth. No. <laughs> I went through a whole bunch of things. But that's always been there for me. It's always been there too. Uh, it almost seems genetic. It's just part of me to work for poor people, and in particular, to work for young people who are poor. That's just there. I, I don't even think I ever thought through doing that. It's just a part of who I am. And, and as, as much as I am, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm genetically an organizer. As I was always organizing as a kid. I was organizing my group of guys and gals and who we hung out with. I was the organizer. And um, so, yeah, I relate very much to what Antoine is talking about. And 
And uh, so I don't believe in knowing. I know him, and he knows me. We know each other. Some of the young people, the children of the All Stars and, and uh, you know, of the welfare organizing, I'm sorry, said to us, we'd, we'd like to do talent shows. So all we had to do, and this is not altogether easy, and I'm proud to take some credit for it, all we had to do to get the All Stars going was to listen. That's the trick. The trick was listening. And, they, and they, they said, well, that's what we want to do. As opposed to a lot of other things in our lives which are imposed on us, which are meant to, to remediate the fact that we're poor. No, 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 no. What you've got to figure out how to do is how to people, how, is teach people how to grow from doing what they want to do, not to remediate them into somebody else. Yeah, we, we, we say a lot of things which might sound like that to people, you know. You got to adjust to this, you got to perform your way into business, you got to you got to look more like the dominant culture. But we but everyone knows that we never mean it in the fuller sense of the word. What we mean to say is that you have to do what you want to do, but you have to do it well. So how do you do it well? Well, if you do it, you know, a lot of people say, well, we want to just do it naturally. Well, maybe this will shock some people. Naturally, it won't work. Because natural, as some of the writers who I most respect have pointed out over centuries, naturally will reflect how you've been cornered, how you've been pigeonholed, how you've been, whatever, brainwashed. So you've got to do it unnaturally. You have to be unnatural. Because you have to grow, and growing requires stepping beyond who you've been made to be. You've got to be other than poor if you can fight through that. That takes a performance. It's a hell of a performance. I won't perform how you want me to perform, which is sometimes called conforming, but it's bigger even than conforming. But I just won't do it. I have a and I, 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 I don't want people to I don't want people to be crazy, weird, strange. But I think it's important that we all find our way to perform who we are, not to just be who we are. Because I think that that doesn't move us forward. And young people are, to get back to cliches, are leading the way in that. And they have to lead the way in that. Of course, you know, you know all the stuff that they say. It's the future, blah, 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 blah. But the issue is not the future. The future's going to come no matter what happens. You know? I mean, we don't have to do anything to bring about the future. But for development to come, for that, this human species of ours to grow, I think we have to perform, in Vygotsky's language, we have to perform beyond ourselves. And that's very, very, very hard to do. The All-Stars are not just young. In fact, in many cases, they're not so young. They're youthful. And that's beautiful. Okay. They're, 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 they're poor people making a huge effort to grow the world, to perform the world. And they're going to do it. I have confidence. I think young people are, are going up, are going up against a huge force. You know, we're in this current uh, financial crisis, where lots of other crises as well. It's a very, you know, very complicated world. But if you listen to the grown-ups as they talk about it, is that somehow all of this happened? This collapse, this financial collapse, this time, by some mysterious force. What force did it? Like, oh, <laughs> too complicated for you. The workings of the financial markets are unbelievably complex. No one could possibly learn it. And young people can stand up and say, you know, I don't buy that. <laughs>